doctor pack here with fellow real doctor another handshake dr brad schoenfeld real doctors unite um i mean the medical community has been really silent since we we met up today i think they feel threatened they feel like they're losing the title i don't think they had it ever but i digress we're here literally in your house thank you for having us to briefly talk about the new study that we just pre-printed not peer review published just yet on supersets and the potential for supersets to be quite an effective strategy or technique whatever you want to call it at making really solid muscle growth gains in very little time and also to discuss whether they could even be more potent than straight sets in some scenarios but let's just start with the study so can you give us a very brief rundown of the study sure uh, we started with 50 subjects. Uh, we ended with 43. So we had seven dropouts. One group did um, paired supersets where they did an agonist into an antagonist movement. So for instance, biceps into triceps, uh, leg extensions into leg curls, lat pull downs into bench press. The other group did the same exercises, just as straight sets. So they do set of lat pull downs, rest two minutes, set of lat pull downs, rest two minutes, et cetera. Uh, four sets per exercise, uh, and we trained them all uh, to failure on all sets. Mm. Sounds like they were untrained, but wait a second. Oh, wait, they were all had at least one year of resistance training experience, and uh, some of them were actually quite well trained. That's awesome. And we assessed strength, hypertrophy, muscle endurance, power, anything else I'm missing? Uh, session RP. Session RP as well. And there was some qualitative feedback collected as far as nausea goes. Correct. Very nice. And what did we find? So basically the superset group uh, did just as well as the traditional set group in virtually every measure. There were some very mild nuances, but none of them statistically uh, meant much. And I think the overall conclusion was that supersets were literally just as effective uh, for muscular adaptations as traditional sets. And they completed the session in what, 36% less time? 36% less time. We'll call it 40% just, we'll round it up. Yeah, exactly. Like typical social media PhDs. Now, my question is, obviously we, this was not a study where we had participants do all the volume in the world. Correct. So roughly how much volume are we talking about? Um. So the six exercises for it was uh, 48 sets throughout the week, total for all the body. So it was basically four sets, six exercises, uh, 24 sets per session, twice a week. So nowhere near 20 to 30 set per, recommendation per muscle group. Even 10. Yeah. Would you yeah? Would you call it like low to moderate training volume? We would call it on the lower volume. On the lower volume, coming straight from the high volume uh, mansion. So I'll be well, we're, I mean, it's not ultra low, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it would be considered, I think, by most people, two day training a week and uh, 48 total sets, I think is pretty low volume for most people. I can see the sniper across the, the house now that I've asked you about volume and he's like, hey, wait a second, be careful there with the terminology. Um, so in theory, obviously, we don't have any direct evidence looking at supersets in the context of maximizing muscle growth in comparison to traditional sets or straight sets, as some people call them. But given this study in trained individuals and the bit of literature that exists before that, would you say that in the context of getting more volume in and there is more evidence coming out that you, there's we haven't essentially found that limit, that upper threshold, to training volume and, hyper and hypertrophy and would you say that for somebody who may not necessarily be insanely pressed for time but still wants to get a lot of volume in um that supersets could be potentially more potent than straight sets simply because they allow you to get more volume in so that's kind of the uh, million dollar question that's somewhat hard to answer because we don't know that if you do more volume might there be uh, issues with residual fatigue from mm -hmm. the supersets I certainly th uh, hold out the potential that that is the case, that you might get uh, more, that it would be more effective. Can't necessarily extrapolate uh, with the volume that we have to higher volumes because we don't know. The obvious, so again, to your point, you mentioned about the um, nausea. 
The superset group, particularly at the beginning, did have more than double the subjects experienced nausea. Um, and some of them experienced it throughout the study to some extent. So it uh, it is a more demanding way to train, although interestingly, the session RPE, it was more at the beginning of the study, but it did seem to equate uh, the course of the study. Um, it's kind of, uh, I, I think, a, it's a study that certainly needs to be done to get clarification on that. But I think uh, without the evidence, I, I think it's something that can be experimented with. Just like drop sets is another, uh, I think, technique that can be experimented with in a similar vein mm -hmm. that you can get more volume in without really adding on much time. Yeah. And I do think that if we were to, again, make an educated bet for somebody who wants to not, not for not for people who want to ma who only want to maximize gains but who want to make really solid gains going from let's say four to six weekly sets per muscle group at least direct sets going to 10 to 12 i think that can make a meaningful difference yep. and using supersets can be an easy way to get that in obviously as you mentioned there may be more fatigue associated with that potentially some side effects but in practice, that's easily adjustable. Like, totally. sure, you can rest a bit more between each superset. So you could, instead of resting 20 or less seconds like they did in the study, you could rest for 30 seconds. Um, you could take a bit more time between each superset and you could slowly phase those in for muscle groups that feel easier. So for example, you could do most of your leg training as like uh, straight sets, ex especially exercises that require, that have a high skill component and then do a lot of your either isolation work or machine-based work in the form of supersets using exercises that are not as systemically fatiguing as um, as others. Totally agree. I, I do also want to point out, this is something that I'm very big on, that each study is just a piece of a puzzle. So um, this was the first study to actually look at the topic in resistance training participants. We need replication. We need just more different types of a focus, like you said, more volume, uh, perhaps different rest intervals in terms of the sets to get really a better handle on this. But I think it really provides strong preliminary evidence that the uh, supersets, at the very least, are a very time efficient alternative. And I think uh, we can certainly apply this. I think the biggest application is to the general public, where time is a real issue. Uh, time is considered a primary barrier to exercise adherence, and that if we um, if we can cut training time by close to 40% and keep volume the same, that really has very uh, practically meaningful and important implications for getting more people involved in resistance training and seeing the results that they want to get from from their efforts. Yeah. A super practical way that people can implement agonist and agonist supersets, in my opinion, is to opt for exercises that so like pick a machine and then carry a, a pair of dumbbells with them to the machine so they don't have to hog two machines because that's a common criticism oh, yeah. so like you could do a lat pull down and have a, a couple of dumbbells and then do tricep extensions or push-ups or whatever so so that is a big issue that um you will deal with when training in a gym that particularly if you want to do let's say we did leg extensions into leg curls you want to take two machines up, you know, good luck with that when the guy next to you says, what are you talking about? I want to use that machine. You're using that machine. No, 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 you got to stay away. I got another uh, five minutes before before you can actually work in. That does not go over well generally in a gym. But yeah, you can use, I think, like you said, you can do workarounds that use dumbbells, barbells, whatever. Try to structure your supersets so that you're uh, you're using the equipment efficiently and that is not being a burden to other people because we don't want to do that. Yeah, I think that's a that's a limitation that, yes, it does exist to a certain extent, but if you are really pressed for time and you really want to make solid gains, there's you're going to be so flexible with your exercise selection. And as you said thousands of times, you can use lighter loads for higher repetitions, heavier loads for lower repetitions. There's so much flexibility that you can make it work. Totally. Plus, it's extra motivation for you to make more money so you can buy your own home gym and buy or buy even the commercial gym that you work uh, out uh, at. Good point. Yeah. So that's the real reason why you should do supersets. So you get sick of people working in and then you just buy the entire place. 
any um any huge limitations that you can foresee because personally when um, i saw the results of the study i was like um aside from leaning into supersets slowly and fatigue and obviously still a few things to learn I don't see a ton of downsides to implementing them. No, I think again, the higher volumes is a question that needs to be answered. And I think where might there be a cut point? So you go to, let's say 10 sets, you let's say you, so we did 48, let's say you go up to 70 sets, which is starting to get into more moderate volume. What about 90 sets? What about a hundred sets for, when I talk about a hundred sets for all, oh, no. all the major, mu not for giving muscle. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm going to edit this a hundred <laughs> sets every week per muscle group. So, you know, you start getting in where all the set, the total body training, if you add up all the sets and you're using multiple supersets, could there be issues from fatigue? It's possible, but that's, I think to me, the major, when I say limitation, I think thing that ne needs to be studied more. Yeah. Perfect. So the next time you're in the gym and you're finding it hard to get your volume in, or you want to get more volume in and don't have enough time, supersets are strategies that you can give a go. I'd say be a bit careful with your exercise selection. It may not be the best idea to superset a high bar squat with a marble, with a deficit Romanian deadlift, where you know there's a bit of a skill component there. You may be way too fatigued from one going into the other. Play around with different exercises, but at the end of the day, if you also look at the rest literature, even if you end up resting a bit less or going to a set a bit more fatigued, it's not the end of the world. Great. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me in your house. And we'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe, buy stuff, buy Dr. Schoenfeld's books. And if you're doing less than 50 sets per muscle group per week, are you even training? Peace.